How about now? I bet you can hear me. I bet you can hear me. Please let me know in the chat if you can hear me. My phone was connected to Bluetooth, and I have a feeling that the audio mic was on. Yes, you can hear me. Okay. Sorry about that. That was definitely my technical difficulties. I had my Bluetooth headset set up and my phone was expecting my Bluetooth uh, headset, which is not near me to accept uh, the sound. So here's, we're going to start this all over again. I am in my basement, what I call the gallery room. It's not your typical basement. There's the 110 African uh, tank there. There's my incubators. But we are going to talk about the helmeted chameleons today. So, Facekeeper, thank you for joining me. Panther Palette, uh, hopefully you are still with me. And I'm going to talk about my journey to helmeted chameleons. Um, unfortunately, the focus, it's just, I can't do a lot with YouTube here. But there you can see the new male helmeted chameleon that I received just about three weeks ago. Now he is doing awesome. I have him housed in this uh, kind of 60 to 70 gallon lizard lounge enclosure. Um, you think, oh, that's a glass tank. But um, these lizard lounges from the 70s, um, are 70s, from the 90s, have vents. They have vents in the side and vents in the back. So it's worked pretty well. Um, as far as age goes, this chameleon is about, uh, well, maybe th it was sold to me as three months old, but I think he is actually older than that. Um, I think he's quite a bit older than that. And um, let's see if this will work. Come on, let's, come on, buddy. Let's get you in focus. Ah, oh, it's so hard, doesn't um, So he's tiny. I mean, he's like four inches from front to back. Um, and uh, super cool. Super cool. Um, he doesn't have a name, so I'm taking names um, for this little guy. But why did I get this little guy? He's a captive bred helmeted chameleon. Well, that's because over here, and yes, it's a much smaller enclosure, over here I have my female helmeted chameleon that my friend Sean McNeely got me. And guys, I don't, I'm not often here like talking, and so they're kind of hiding. That's her back, and you can see a fungus gnat flying around in there, but that is my adult female helmeted chameleon. And my buddy Sean McNeely um, needed to free up some space for a project he's working on. Uh, stay tuned for that. Um, but he gave me finally a helmeted chameleon. And so not, I mean, like what I mean finally, I mean finally I entered the world of chameleon keeping. I met Sean like four years ago and um, yeah, uh, now he, um, we're working with these chameleons. So are you going to breed them? Absolutely, uh, face keeper, absolutely. I am most definitely gonna breed them. This is what we call a small batch breeding project. I'm working with the male and a female. I'm keeping them in rich, luxurious, enriching enclosures and I would, the plan is to upgrade this enclosure, and yes. And guess what? This species doesn't lay eggs. They give birth to live young, and that is one of the big, big reasons I went with this chameleon. So, Foxy, where is he? Um, there he is, back there. And apologies that we can't focus better, but that... That is him. That is our little helmeted chameleon. Come on, buddy. He's way in the back. Let me see if I can 
come over here and get a better, oh yeah, there we go. That's a little bit, eh, maybe a little better, maybe, come on. So that's the male and he's getting bigger. Yay, so super shy. Um, someone asked me, uh, so Aja, Aja Fuller says, do you have a snake? I do not have any snakes. We are a non-snake household. Uh, thanks, Panther. Um, so if you keep pets, let me know what you keep. What are you interested in? Do you have any exotic pets? Do you have snakes? And if you like exotic pets, please give this video a thumbs up. Uh, let me know if this is something you're interested in. But these chameleons are from Kenya, guys. They live up in the mountains. And it can even snow where these chameleons live. Um, it can get so, so cold. So that's why I keep them. Um, they need really specific conditions. They need to get down to about uh, 60 degrees at nighttime and my basement does that. So that's one of the big reasons I decided to keep a montane species from Kenya. I have the conditions that they need. And you know what? That's the most important thing I think about any exotic pet. You have to ask yourself, can you give the conditions that they need? So welcome, welcome. Uh, Please do give a thumbs up for this video if you like exotic pets. Uh, thank you much. Face Keeper's here. He has seven dogs, one cat, and ten cows. Oh, that's cool. That is super cool. Uh, Clark Parker's here. Uh, Clark has dogs. Uh, Vashroomy says, I have a turtle. Vashroomy, uh, yes, we can see turtles. Uh, just stick around and I will show you turtles uh, a little bit towards the end. So Clark, I have a lot more pets. Um, just in this room, I have my big 110 gallon uh, aquarium. And then in my tortoise room, which I will share with you, if I get 10 thumbs up in this video, I will go into the uh, tortoise room. So give me a thumbs up. Everybody, give me a thumbs up, and then I will take you into the tortoise room. Um, I have a lot more pets. We have a lot more animals. We have mostly tortoises, but we have three species of lizards. We have our pug max. We have bearded dragons, leopard. Actually, we have four species of lizards. We have several fish tanks. I have three toad box turtles. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we're looking for 10 likes if you want to, uh, check out the, uh, the, the, the tortoise room, uh, smash the like button, uh, give this video a like, um, and thank you for the hearts. So guys, I'll have to tell you, it's a lot, lot, lot of work, um, but the chameleon project is worth it. And can you imagine someday when I have babies dropping out of the female? Um, let's go look at the female and see if she's moved at all. Um, she's hiding. Um, back there. She's hiding. Sorry, there's some... You, you can only see her back. Um, yeah, top right, like button. Uh, please give me some likes. If I get 10 likes... We'll take a tour of the tortoise room, a live tour. Um, top right button, give that a give that a smash. Foxy is him. I have two green anoles, one male and one female. I'm trying to get them to mate, and I have a red-eared slider. So, Foxy, that's awesome. We have a, one anole too, and that's my son Brody's, and uh, he lives upstairs in Brody's bedroom. So if you're just joining us, welcome. Please introduce yourself. Please let me know what exotic pets or pets you have. And if you want to see the tortoise room, give this video a thumbs up. We're looking for 10 thumbs up. Uh, can we get to 10 thumbs up? Um, oh, FaZe has to go to Walmart. Uh, enjoy. Our, get some good stuff. Have a great day. Oh, we're up to 17. Um, so 
we're looking at our chameleons now, guys. They're they're hiding these are helmeted chameleons. But uh, thank you so much for joining me. Um, let's find my uh, juvenile youngster uh, helmeted chameleon. Can you guys see him? Can you see him back there? Um, let me know if you can see him. Oh, there he is. Can you see him? Oh yeah, there he is. It's really hard to focus with the phone and so much going on, but that is the baby helmeted chameleon. I've had him for about three weeks. He eats all kinds of interesting bugs. So thanks for the hearts. Smash that thumbs up button. We are going to do a yeah, yeah, exactly. His legs and his head. That's 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 what I see too. So this is the helmeted chameleon. He's a baby. He was born in human care. Uh, this is a species that does not lay eggs. Uh, Clark has two dogs, one horse. Awesome, Clark. Uh, more likes, not thumbs. Um, yeah. Yeah, we need thumbs up, guys. We need, uh, I want you to thumbs up this video. And if we get to 10, I will go into the tortoise room and do a tour of the tortoise room. So the helmeted chameleons are super awesome. Um, who has a chameleon? Does anyone have a pet chameleon? I mean, I was kind of afraid to get into chameleons, guys. But you know what? They're awesome. Oh, okay. Something's happening over here. There's the help. That is the female helmeted chameleon. That is the girl. Wes Coleman says happy Sunday. Hey, Wes. Let's see what she's doing. She's probably hungry. She's due to be fed today. There's no food in the enclosure right now. But it's so cool to watch her. she's doing. Zoom you back out so it's not so shaky. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing for her to eat, but it's so cool to see them on the move. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up uh, on the video uh, because I, I don't... I've noticed that she's moving, so I'm going to talk quietly uh, so that I don't scare her further. Um, they are extremely, extremely uh, sensitive animals. Um, Brian says, his name is Brian, and he has five reptiles. One ball python, bearded dragon, and an Amazon tree boa, and two leopard geckos. That's a great collection, Brian. Uh, guys, uh, smash the thumbs up button. And if so, we will do <laughs> we will do a uh, live tour of the tortoise room, which has uh, at least twenty five tortoises. So yeah, I think she's looking for food. I think she's hungry, um, but I will be feeding her soon. So guys, here's what happened about a week ago. Okay, we're up to six. We're looking for four more likes and I will go into the tortoise room. Um, this girl laid what we call infertile ova. Literally, I couldn't find her once and I was like, what the heck is going on? And um, Thanks for the hearts. Please hit the thumbs up button on the video itself. If I get 10 thumbs up, we'll go do a tour. Um, but she laid infertile, essentially, what are eggs. Now, this animal doesn't lay eggs. She gives birth to live young. So Anaconda says, uh, or immortal... <laughs> I immortal uh, King says they have anaconda, carpet python, red tail boa, ball python, leopard gecko, and beardy here. 
That's a very nice collection, very nice collection. Um, just because I didn't want to scare her, um, I wanted her to stay out and not retreat into the vegetation. And so she's uh, clearly not doing that now, so I'm talking a little louder. Um, she's used to my voice and, yep, man, isn't she cool? Um, if I go much further, she probably will get scared um, and move back. Sorry about that reflection. There we go. That's a little bit better. Um, yeah, it's possible. It's possible. That's probably uh, what she's looking for. Um, I don't... I don't... Um, interact with the chameleons very much. This is about the most interaction uh, I will ever, ever get with them. Um, let's check out on the mail. We need four more likes for the tortoise room tour. Give it a, give it a thumbs up if you're here. Um, thanks, Brian. This is the mail that we're now looking at. Um, yeah, Clark doesn't have to whisper. Oh, that's funny. Immortal. Uh, that's, that's a pretty decent focus job there on the mail. Um, I, I cannot feed her right now. Um, the feeders are upstairs, and um, I cannot uh, hand feed these guys. When I open the enclosure, they retreat. Um, so what happens is that um, I put the bugs in and then close the door and they come out. Uh, thanks, Greg. Um, so, so Greg uh, from Greg's Turtle Haven is here. I don't know if you remember these, Greg, but in the 1990s, um, Oceanic Systems made these super cool lizard lounges. And they were like my dream. Um, and you see this one right here? Um, I got this like for my 13th birthday or something like that. And I still have that. <laughs> and then I found the next size up on Facebook Marketplace. Um, these lizard lounges are awesome. And while most people think you need to have chameleons in a screen cage, um, that is not true as long as they have ventilation. So people were realizing that about lizards in the 90s. And this was kind of the first attempt at making a glass lizard slash reptile enclosure. Um, and as you can see, they have vents on the side. They even had a plug, plugged hole uh, to run a uh, power cord in there. Um, underneath, they even had grooves in the plastic to put under tank heating in as well. So, you know, I think these are the pretty, uh, pretty cool enclosures. Thanks, Clark, for liking. We're up to seven. We're up to seven likes. And so we need three more thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up. Um, <laughs> Foxy says, guys, how to like is to press the three dots at the top right and press the right, the like button. That is how to do it. So we're up to seven. So Foxy says, press the three dots at the top right and press the like button. If you do that, we will... Uh, go for a tour in the tortoise room. Um, Wes Coleman says he's about to go make a few more profiles on YouTube or what? Um, okay, we're up to eight. Um, so we need two more likes and our, our, uh, our mail is moving up in the fig back there. All of these plants are from Africa, guys. Every single one of them. Um, th this is an animal from Africa, and all the plants are from Africa. Um, there, there's about, 
I don't know. Actually, how many are there? There's two types of Dracaena sucralosa, and then there's a Dracaena fragrance, and there's the Sansevieria, and then there's the spider plant, and then there is the, um, the, the, the vine in the grape family whose name escapes me, and then the fiddle leaf fig, which is outgrowing this tank. So we're looking at helmeted chameleons, guys. Um, the female has retreated. <laughs> so she came out. Maybe she did hear my voice. Maybe she did want some food, uh, realized that there was no food coming, um, but she's not to be seen. And then our male is back in the back. Uh, he is way back there. You can kind of see, man, hard to get through there, but he's back in the back. Um, so I plan to breed these. We just need the male to get bigger. Um, Clark says, I was just scrolling through YouTube and then I just wanted to watch something live and I found this and it seemed interesting. Awesome, awesome, Clark. Um, this is a new feature that YouTube has and that is to show vertical lives in the shorts feed. Um, and so it's a new way for people to find my channel. Um, I do a lot of shorts um, and I keep people updated but I love doing lives. Every Thursday night at 8 o'clock, I do a live show where I either talk about reptiles and amphibians or interview someone that likes reptiles and amphibians and keeps them. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Immortal King said, the, the algorithm is constantly changing. If you want to be good at YouTube, you just have to keep adapting and stay ahead of the curve. So if you're new, let me know your name. Um, we are doing a thing where if you press the like button, uh, the thumbs up like button, which you have to press the three dots and then go up to the top right and hit the thumbs up on this video, I will do a tour of my tortoise room. I need two more thumbs up on the video to do the tortoise room. Um, but before we do that, let's go over and look at the African river tank and see how that's doing. Oh, 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 I, I, we're actually down to eight. So someone, someone unvoted. <laughs> oh, that's, fun. oh, the, or down to seven. Okay, now it's back. Um, so this is my 110 gallon tank. Um, it's hard to control the exposure with the phone while doing this live. But there are 13 Congo Tetras in there. Actually, I could, you know, the, even the cooler way to do this, guys, is to see it from the side. Um, I love the perspective uh, from the side. So um, there are 13 Congo Tetras. Um, Wes says, have I had any problems with them launching their tongue at the glass? Uh, no, I have not. That is not an issue. They do not miss. They are super, super smart. So um, they absolutely do not miss. Um, but I keep animals from Africa, guys. I am very specific about the animals that I decide to work with. And here is my African river tank. I wanted to explore the aquatic places of Africa, the rivers. And so I have all of these hinchback tortoises from Africa. I wanted to have fish from Africa too. And oh my gosh, this is awesome. Those shiny shimmery fish, those are Congo tetras. And they're from the Congo rainforest. They live in rivers. Uh, that feed into the Congo River. And, um, oh yeah, see when they just, they kind of flash fire that bright color. Uh, Sean has joined us. Um, um, Panther Palette says, for just getting into chameleons, you are sure getting this down. So Panther, I will tell you, I may have just gotten a chameleon, 
But I've been listening to Bill's podcast for two years. And when I say Bill, I mean Bill of the Chameleon Academy. And Sean is here. I started learning about the Chameleon Academy when my son first met Sean McNeely at the Cleveland Reptile Show. And the rest is history. I have chameleons. And Sean, you just missed them. But I do have um, the African River tank up. So... Um, the water definitely has some tannins in it. That's okay. That's from the driftwood. That's fine. Um, Clark says, do I make videos that aren't live? Just asking. Yeah, I do, but I make them about once a month. It takes so much time to create a really interesting, engaging video. Um, but Clark, I have dozens of videos. You can go watch them. Don't go watch them now. Um, but I'm looking for a thumbs up on this video, guys. Two more thumbs up. We, we need to get to 10. Uh, give it a thumbs up, this video. Um, hit the three dots in the top right and give it a thumbs up. If we get to 10, I will do a live tour of the tortoise room. Thanks, Clark. Um, you know, I mean, live, live for me has been really successful. Um, I like doing live. Uh, I've been told I like to talk, <laughs> and so they come really easy to me, and I think it's really authentic and genuine. Oh, yeah, look at, see that? How, um, so I want to ask you guys, how much money do you think I paid for this 110-gallon tank? Now, it has some scratches, but it's a 110-gallon acrylic fish tank. I mean, this thing is huge. How much do you think I paid for it? Um, and then I'm also looking for two more thumbs up. Give this video a th thumbs up. We get to 10, and I'll do a tour of the tortoise room. Um, we're almost there. We just need two more thumbs up. Um, does anyone out there keep tortoises? I know Sean does. Okay, so Sean says, McZoo Exotic Pets, he had African cichlids for years. I have the Crebensis cichlid in here, guys, the West African crib. There's the male. He is super fired up right now. Let's see if he can flare his fins. Um, but, man, he's great. There's the female right there. And, yeah, they're a pair. Uh, they, there's five babies in here. So those are the cichlids. Those are the only cichlid, cichlids I've ever had. If I did a new tank... Um, I'd probably go with African Rift Lake cichlids. But, Sean, I'm curious, which ones did you have? Um, Brian says tortoises are his all-time favorite. And we ha oh, we made it. We made it to 10. So, um, Foxy is him. So, tortoises tend to be more expensive. Um, oh, Kristen is here, uh, or Christian, sorry. Uh, Christian says, what is your fish and what, what would you recommend to beginners? Well, if you want to get into an African tank, um, this is exactly what I would recommend for beginners. These are Congo Tetras. These guys are still small. They get to be about three to four inches. Uh, so you need at least a, like a 40 gallon breeder to really have these. Um, but they're readily bred and then i really like the rainbow crib or uh the the west african crib um that is my female rainbow crib so those are two really good species so clark says his brother lo loves stuff like this so thank you thank you uh brian says tank plus fish 180 bucks you know brian i got a steal of a deal so you're you're low Hundred bucks for the tank. Uh, the fish, fish were more, quite a bit more than that. But I buy my fish from a small local shop, and uh, uh, the the stand I built completely myself. Uh, filter, CJ Whale five hundred, uh, heater, Aquion three hundred watt heater in the back. That professional series. You can barely see that heater. Isn't that awesome? Okay. Uh, who wants to... Oh, do I have any spiders? Um, I didn't join not too long ago, so I don't really know. I do not have spiders. 
Um, just not something that really interests me, and I do not have snakes. We are a non-snake household, so um, I'm really loving this aquarium, guys. Really, really loving it. Just because I'm cool and you pronounce my name right, uh, I'm going to subscribe. This makes me think about getting fish. Are they hard to take care of? Um, no, not really. And Christian, uh, we started this by looking at um, chameleons. Uh, and guess what, guys? It's, it's time. Let's go into the tortoise room. So for those that are new here, um, I work with hinchback tortoises, and most of my uh, animals are hingeback tortoises. Actually, why don't we start right here? Um, here are the incubators. So in here I have eggs, tortoise eggs that will be hatching, oh, in about a month or so. So you like tortoises? Subscribe. Um, there's one egg you can see that top left one is cracked. Um, but these are Western hingeback tortoise eggs, and I also have Holmes hingeback tortoise eggs. So I have two incubators running. One is a bit warmer, one is a bit cooler. Um, who knows what's special about turtles and tortoises as far as uh, their eggs and incubation? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? So, welcome, welcome to the tortoise room. So. This is my uh, tortoise room. Um, I like to use these big 110 gallon tough stuff tubs. Um, these are for a group of five Holmes hingeback tortoises. Uh, this guy's kind of messed up his cage, but then I'll, I'll use the PVC enclosures. Um, we've got two Holmes hingebacks here, top and bottom. Um, and here we have a... Um, juvenile western hinge back. He didn't really eat much of this food. Um, in here, we have the baby Greek tortoise. And let's, let's look at baby Greek. Um, Christian, I don't know how, how many animals I have. That's how many animals I have. I don't know. <laughs> um, this is baby Greek. Baby Greek is a Greek tortoise. Greek tortoises are from the Mediterranean regions, places like Turkey, but ironically, not Greece. Uh, this has basically come my, become my daughter's pet. And we love this little tortoise. He is so cool. Or she. We can't tell if turtles or tortoises are going to be uh, boys or girls until they get much older. Um, got some plates of food for Brownie, who is the longest tortoise I've ever had. So guess, here's, here's Brownie. Guess how long I've had Brownie for, guys. It's going to show my age. But... Uh, this is Brownie. She's kind of shy. She's a Western hingeback tortoise. These guys are extremely rare in the U.S. And so, yeah, guess how many years I've had this tortoise. Guess how many years. Do I have any big fish, Clark says. I do not have any big fish. Um, Sean says Lake Malawi and Victoria. Yeah, very cool. The Rift Lake Cichlids. And Sean says, what? No snakes. No snakes, Sean. We are a no snake household. Um, I thought tortoises are really big. Is that only certain ones that grow really big? And my guess is 15 years. So Christian, yes, absolutely. There are two giant tortoises from the islands. That's the Galapagos tortoise from the Galapagos Islands and the Aldabra tortoise from the Seychelles. Um, but there is a Sulcata tortoise, which many, many people see. But the hingeback tortoises are quite small. Hey, Jennifer. Jennifer's here. Um, welcome. Um, yeah, so this is Brownie. 
And I've had brownie. Come on, focus, focus. For 24 years. And this girl has made uh, laid many eggs and just been a great tortoise. She's pretty shy, though. She's on the shyer side. So she's not, you know, the greatest pet. Not my favorite animal, even though I've had her 24 years. Still a great animal, though. Okay, let's let's look at... Um, let's find Blondie. My kids name the animals. Blondie is kind of in her... Oh, man, Blondie is heavy. I think this girl might have eggs. We'll, we'll see. Um, Blondie's dirty, too, but... Now, Blondie, on the other hand, Blondie is the same species. She's a western hinchback tortoise. And, uh, yeah, she's just an awesome, awesome tortoise. She lays, like, 15 eggs a year, and they're typically all fertile, and they um, hatch quite, quite a bit. So, uh, and she's really personable. She is going to come, like, explore, I think. Um, you gonna come explore? Maybe not. You can just, she had a meal of mushrooms and she didn't, uh, eat her vegetables. Um, is her name actually Blondie? Yes, that is her name, Blondie. We have Blondie and Brownie. Clark. Um, this girl was put on Facebook. The person that owned her thought she was a elongated tortoise. Sorry, switch hands. Um, she's not an elongated tortoise. That's so cool. I had thought that the big difference between turtles and tortoises are, are that they are way bigger and they live longer. So if you could answer, what's the difference between the two? Um, so, tortoises are one type of turtle, uh, Christian. Um, there are many different types of turtles. There are sea turtles. There are snapping turtles. There are box turtles. There are tortoises. And so tortoises are one type of turtle. And, uh, you know, yes, there are the big ones, but they're not all giant. And what makes them all similar is they have um, a very similar uh, structure to how they walk and how their bones, how their back feet are. They, they look like elephant feet. Um, they mostly live on land, but that's not always the case. So, and I also have another one of uh, the creatures that I am responsible for caring for. Hi, creature that I'm responsible for caring for. I'm not a creature. Oh, you're not a creature? This is Paige. I'm not a creature. <laughs> what are you? I'm a human. Oh, okay. So that's my daughter, Paige. Um, Can you help us build a tent? Yes. Yes, I can. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, um, that Clark just passed away. Um, this is actually his grandpa's name. That's sad. That's really sad. Um, I, my grandma, I, I have one grandma left. Um, that, that sounds bad, but I, I, I still have one grandma living and she will be 102. Oh, Sean says. She is 102. Uh, she'll be 102, like, next weekend. She, Mom said she is She's going to be 103? No, she's 102 right now. No, nah, I don't think so. I think she'll be 102 next weekend. Okay, um, so she's 100 right now, and she's going to... Yeah, she's 101 right now, I think. Ugh. Uh, so, Gaming Boy, we are doing a little tour and introducing you to some of the hinchback tortoises that we have. But, but not all. Um... What? Did you show them your birthday tiki mask? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So Paige asked me if if uh, I showed you guys my African mask. 
This came from uh, Navica, which works with local artisans across the world. Um, and this was made in Ghana. Um, so that's my turtle and lizard African mask. So I think you got it for your birthday. I did get it for my birthday. That's right. Um, so that is the story. Um, everyone, thank you so much. Thank you for liking this video. Thanks for getting us up to 10 so we could do that tortoise room tour. And please, please, please subscribe. I do shorts. I do lives. And once a month, I do a full-length video. Thank you so much. The more you watch, the more I can do this. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, Paige asks me to shout out uh, her channel. Um, it's called Paige Explores. Please go find it. We put videos up there. Um, Heidi says, I have a 27-year-old map turtle that has lived a solitary life. Would it be okay to bring in another turtle? It might be okay, Heidi, but it might be a disaster, and then you might be introducing a problem onto your hands. So it just depends. Um, but particularly if he's lived by himself for 25 years, uh, he's probably not going to like another buddy, especially if the turtle has a relatively small enclosure. Now, if he's outside in a giant pond, that's a different story. Okay, folks, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We will see you next Thursday night at 8. We're going to have Paul Bodner on. He's traveled the world. Uh, Christian, thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, uh Clark's grandson, again, sorry for your loss. Thank you so much. I'm going to see you next time. Thanks for subscribing.